because Noah's flood, it drowned out all those uh, mutant sons of God and offspring. But what about the creatures of the sea? Think about that. Look at Genesis 6. Look at verse 12. And God looked upon the, notice what? Earth. And behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the where? Earth. Now, do you know what Genesis 1 says about the earth? So we're going to look at Genesis 6 and Genesis 7. So go to Genesis chapter 7. It said all flesh died, right? So everyone died. But here's the key. It's on the earth. Now, what did Genesis 1 said about the dry land? He called the dry land what? Earth. Now look at chapter 7. Look at who died at chapter 7. Genesis 7, and we'll look at verse 21. And all flesh died that moved where? Upon the earth. Look at this, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the land died. And every lives, living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the where? Ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth and Noah re only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. Did you ever saw fish in there? No. But you know what 1 Corinthians 15 said? 1 Corinthians 15 said different flesh. This verse said all flesh, right? 1 Corinthians 15 said there are different flesh. Man, beast, creeping thing, and fishes and birds. You don't see fish here. You don't see fish here. You also got to think about this. Obviously, Noah did not have a, an aquarium inside the ark. You also got to realize that too. So in Genesis chapter 7, here's another interesting thing. It says nostrils, breath of life, right? Fish don't breathe in air, you got to understand. The Word of God can be much more interesting than you think. And you thought Bible, Bible study was boring, right? That's what you thought, right? You thought Bible study was boring. Well, you got to study the Word more. You got to be a Bible believer in a Bible believing church, and you'd be surprised. So notice that fish are not mentioned. Here's another fun fact, which I mentioned in my other video. It is said that 90% of the sea is undiscovered, of what's in the sea. So whatever creatures are in the sea, it's like undiscovered. Here's another interesting thing. Even scientists today talk about that when we go down, down, lower and lower in the sea, we see strangers and stranger creatures when we get into a darker and darker part of the sea. And there are creatures in there that we don't know about either. They'll, they'll pick out some they'll know about, but they don't know every creature in the dark bottom of the sea. But here's another interesting thing, okay? As you go deeper, deeper into the sea, where are you getting closer toward? Deeper towards the bottom of the sea is an inch closer toward hell. And you get closer toward where hell is located. But look at Jonah 2. Look at Jonah 2. This is interesting. Go to Jonah 2. Jonah, he was swallowed by a whale, right? Swallowed by a big fish. But notice as he keeps talking when he was swallowed by the fish, and it goes deeper and deeper toward the bottom and bottom, bottom, dark, dark parts of the sea. And then he comes down to hell, it mentions. Now look at Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. And it's really interesting that he says this. First he mentions that it's in the whale's belly. Okay? That's what you're going to find out first. And then you're going to find out that he talks about in hell language. Now look at Jonah chapter 2 and look what the, this prophet said. In verse 1, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of where? The fish's belly. All right? Now keep reading. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. 
out of the belly of where? Hell, cried I. Well, that's not literally hell. Well, keep reading here, okay? Verse 3, For thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. So notice that he's like at the bottom of the sea here, all right? But keep reading as it goes lower. Verse 5, the waters compassed me about, even to the where? Soul. It's transitioning. It's transitioning from something physical to something spiritual. The depth closed me round about. The weaves were wrapped about my head. Now look at this part here. Verse 6, I went down to the where? Bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars, notice, was about me forever. Look at this. So he's at the bottom of the mountains, and the earth, like bars, is about him, surrounding him. So he's in an enclosed space of the earth at the bottom of the mountains. It says bars of the earth, right? Hell has what? Bars. Not only that, Jesus said what? He used Jonah as an example. I will be in the heart of the earth. Did he not say that? Three days and three nights. As Jonah was in the whale's belly, so will the Son of Man be in where? The heart of the earth. But not only that, look, look at the next part. Yet hast thou what? Brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. That's coming back from the dead there. Because look at Acts chapter 2. Look at Acts chapter 2. Because let's be honest. These critics, they have a right to say, how can you survive three days and three nights in a whale's belly? Obviously you can. He died. And guess what? He went to hell. That's why when he talks about aquatic language here, sea, whale, in the belly, weeds, you see this transition towards something soul and spiritual. The waters compassed me to the soul. Earth with their bars compassed me forever. Out of the belly of hell cried I. See that? He was fading out here. Look at Acts chapter 2. And that was a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 27. Verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. And remember, Jonah said, out of the belly of hell, and my soul was compassed with waters. But keep reading. Neither wilt thou what? Suffer thine holy one to see corruption. And remember what Jonah said, you brought up my life out of corruption. See, he died. So there's no doubt, doubt that Jonah, he died and he went to hell. So Jonah 2 and onward, Jonah, as he went deeper into the sea, he was going deeper, transitioning more and more into where? Hell. It brings up an interesting question if this fish or whale that swallowed Jonah might be something spiritual. It brings up an interesting fact. But I can't prove it. It's a possibility to think about, though. It's a possibility to think about. But let's keep reading right here about the scriptures. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. So we see right here that the bottom of the sea, there's this relationship with sea and hell throughout the Bible. Sea and hell throughout the Bible has some kind of relationship concerning what? Bottom. As you go deeper and deeper to the bottom. But that could explain why. Here's another thing to think about. This could also explain why that uh, if there were reptilian supernatural creatures, the giants, that survived through the flood. Why? If it relates to demonic activity in the waters. And those creatures, they went survived through the flood, and they were able to continue on the offspring of the giants after that and other supernatural strange creatures. That's why more of it you'll see more from the bottom of the sea than in outer space. We're going to look at the book of Revelation chapter 20. And we're going to look at verse 13. And the sea gave up the where? Dead which were in it. Why are there dead souls, something like that, in the sea? Keep reading, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Why is there a relationship here? See that? Where souls are in the bottom of the sea and where souls are in hell. 
See that? So you got to realize this. There is no doubt some kind of connection in the Bible with the bottom of the sea and with hell. Why? Because right below the bottom of the sea and hell, uh, excuse me, right below the bottom of the sea, the closest location would be hell. But not only that, why would the ocean get darker and darker that you can hardly see anything? What is hell known as? A place of outer darkness. The bottom is known to be very dark. If you want to go exploring in the sea, I'm not going to do that in the bottom of the sea. I, I, don't want to go in, I don't want to go deeper over there. It's strange stuff. Strange stuff. But not only that, look at Amos 9. Amos 9. Can these creatures still exist, Pastor? I believe yes. But here's another note. I believe it's very, very rare. Okay? So don't expect when you go swimming, some kind of creature named Jaws is going to come out and eat you up, all right? It's not going to be something like that. Shark attacks are actually extremely rare. I don't know if you knew that, statistically speaking. I know that's surprising. I didn't believe that either until I researched it. But shark attacks are actually known to be very rare. So these, much more, these demonic creatures, they're going to be even more rare, actually. Look at Amos chapter 9. It is very possible this can currently happen because look at this. This is after Noah's flood. Look at Amos chapter 9 and verse 2. Let's start off with verse 2. Though they dig into where? Hell. Then shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Now look what follows with going deeper into hell and going higher to heaven. Look at verse 3. And though they hide them, excuse me, <coughs> and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in where? The bottom of the sea. Look at this. Thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Ooh, do you know who that serpent is? The serpent? That's Revelation 12. That's Leviathan. Look at, I mean... I showed it in my other video, so I'm not going to do it here, but you can look at Revelation 12. That old serpent called the devil and Satan that deceiveth the whole world. You look at the book of Isaiah. Leviathan, that crooked serpent, he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. So you got to realize this. This Leviathan, he's not just swimming. I showed you videos, a lot of videos about demonic activity in outer space. That's why weird stuff like UFOs. Satan, he fought with, against Michael and his angels at the stars of heaven, outer space. That's why Satan's connected with the prince of the power of the air. A lot of it is up there. But you got to realize this. It, it's not just outer space. It's also in the bottom of the sea. You know why? Because hell is over there. You got to realize that. Hell is located down there. That's where the devils are. They're in hell. So he has a lot of activity going down right there, too. It's just extremely interesting. That's why I don't want to go down, like, really deep, deep, deep. You don't know what might happen. <laughs> you don't know what might happen when you go across there. But not only that, it's, a lot of it is undiscovered at the sea. That's why you see a lot of strange creatures. How did these giants and supernatural creatures survive? Perhaps they came up out of the sea. Perhaps when the water started to abate, and some of these sons... Sons of God, well, not sons of God, it would be the mutants, reptilians, and these weird creatures would start to come out again, and that's how the giants came across the land again. A lot, uh, one more gold mine, one more gold mine. I taught this at a different study. Lowest, one of the lowest elevations in the world is the Dead Sea. Interesting, Dead and Sea. And guess what? Sodom and Gomorrah, they were burned with hell fire, literally hell fire, right? They were no more than 20 miles away from the Dead Sea. There's a lot of connection right there with the bottom of the sea, with the top of hell.